Welcome to another episode of Jay Lono's Garage, the car and, uh, beside me here, the greatest high performance bargain of the century. This is a 2019 ZR1 Corvette, 755 horsepower. Uh, it's it's mind boggling. I was lucky enough to drive one of these at over 200 miles an hour, uh, 204 miles an hour exactly, for about, I don't know, 40, 50 miles at the Milford Proving Ground. <laughs> 201 we got from our friends at Spring Mountain. That's the racetrack outside uh, Nevada, right outside Las Vegas, rather, I mean. Uh, and the cool thing is when you buy a ZR1 Corvette, including the price, two days at the Spring Mountain Driving School, where they'll tell you how to keep from ramming into a car across the street when you peel out of the cars and coffee. You know, they'll teach you how to drive this thing sensibly. And because it's the biggest racetrack around, certainly in the West, certainly in the United States, as far as I know, you can get this thing up to speed. Let's bring Todd Crutcher. Todd, come on in. You know, you're the director of marketing. What are you? Yep, I'm the director of marketing okay. for Spring Mountain. For Motors Spring Mountain. Mountain. I've been to that track. It's a great track. You've got all kinds of runoff space. It's 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 a lot of fun, and the Corvette is a perfect uh, perfect vehicle for that track. How did you guys get it before? We couldn't even get this from GM. We had to get it from <laughs> you guys because this is a 2019. Right. Well, we have a whole fleet of them. Really? Again, any any new owner of uh, new ZR1 owners get a two-day school at the Ron Fellows Performance Driving School. And what are these retail for? Well, we'll find out in a minute. But it's certainly I, it's the performance bargain uh, of it all is. time. It's just amazing. I mean, you've got Ferrari, McLaren, Lamborghini, whatever high Pagani levels of power and performance for a fraction of the price. Absolutely. I mean, I mean it, it's. It's pretty amazing. Uh, it's 755 horsepower. And the thing I love about Corvette, they have not abandoned those of us that like the manual transmission. Right. And it's a seven speed manual, which uh, I find just mind blowing. They always say, oh, only a small percentage of people buy a manual. And the fact that Corvette would go through the trouble of making a seven speed transmission when a six speed would have been more than adequate. I, I just like the fact that they put that level of commitment into it for those that like the manual transmission. Although the automatic is pretty amazing too, isn't it? We, you know, and we have both. So again, yeah. it's the owner's school. So if you, regardless if you drive an automatic or a manual, we have a car for you. So what's involved then when you buy a ZR1 and, and, and you go to the driving school, what's, what, what happens? So your first day, is there a day of, you know, sort of sitting in the classroom, explaining how it works, you get right in the car, how does it work? But believe it or not, it starts the day before. Okay. You come in and you arrive at our gates. We have a we have a nice condo waiting for you to stay in. All right. Breakfast and and then you really you get in the you get into your classroom and you know your your Corvette is your classroom. Right. So we're going to have 30 minutes inside an actual classroom and you're going to be outside in the car enjoying it, understanding it, going through the mode selectors, understanding everything this car can do. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's great because there are people who just buy things and have no idea right. <laughs> what, what they're doing. You know, you, all you have to do is turn on YouTube and see idiots pull out it and hit yes. it and just slide in. You know, it's just a horrible, you it's know. It's crazy. So I think, I think it's, it, it's great and really responsible. That's also included in the price of the vehicle. What makes this different? Is it the wing? Do it's, they all have the wing, the ZR1? They don't all they all they don't start with the wing. There's a there's a there's a smaller wing that you can start with and then you okay. can modify to this. Okay. But this is definitely the a track package vehicle and it's unbelievable on the track. It really is. It isn't really it? is. I, I imagine it must it must certainly run with the exotics, if not blow their doors off. Well, we haven't had any that could keep up with it. Yeah. Well that's what I love. You know, I, there are two brands to me that always seem to show up at these shootouts. It's Porsche and Corvette. All right. And you know, a lot of times the exotic guys come in and their car has is five years old and not twelve hundred miles. Another guy, ooh, got eighteen hundred. And the Porsche guys and the Corvette guys show up and they got sixty thousand miles, eighty thousand right. miles. And a lot of those are hard track miles. Because that's what's great about these. They can uh, sort of take a beating and keep on ticking as the old uh, expression goes. Uh, well, this is terrific, and thank you so much for yeah. for, for having this uh, this driving squad. Anybody, you don't have to be a Corvette owner to sign up. Absolutely, right? you do not have to be a, uh, an owner. But I will say, to drive the ZR1, 
at our facility, you do have to be an owner. Right, right. Yeah. That's the one. But I mean, but we have classes for everybody, regardless of you know, we have we have all Corvettes. So right. if it's a Stingray, Grand Sport, Z06, the Zero One, we have a we have a car for you. The other cars are all um, anybody can just come in. Doesn't matter who you are. You do not have to own the car. Todd, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Let's bring someone in who knows this car inside and out. He's the product specialist for Corvette, Chad Bolch. Good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you. You've been here before. You know, when I bought my ZR1 10 years ago, that was the end all be all. That was unbelievable. I had 640 horsepower, which people thought was just the end of the world. Yeah. And this is another 100 and whatever it is. See how bad my math is. But that one still scares me to death. It's amazing how competent it is. Uh, I got a chance to drive this, as I said, at Milford and I was stunned at how aerodynamically sound it was. I mean, I, I've told this story 10 years ago, actually more than 10 years ago, when I took the Porsche Carrera to Talladega, we did a bunch of laps in 190 and it was like kind of moving around a little bit. And I went, oh man, this is, it just got mm, yeah. a little tense. Whereas this, we took it well over 200 miles an hour for a long distance. And it was rock steady. So just how far aerodynamics have come in, in a little over a decade is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing to get a car to go that speed. It's a whole other composition to get it to stick to the ground. Right, right. With this aero package, there's actually at full speed, there's 950 pounds of downforce on top of this car to keep it, to keep it sticking to the ground, which you felt. You know, I was at Milford Proving Ground with Taj. He's the uh, chief engineer for Corvette, the man behind the whole thing. We were having a conversation at 204 miles an hour. We were talking, and it wasn't white knuckling. I go, oh man, this is scary. It was. I felt like I was going 80 miles an hour on the freeway. Yeah. I mean, it was unbelievable. It wasn't even until I saw the footage afterwards <laughs> when we went past the camera. Yeah, those how are fast. We were going. Those are the speeds that the Indy cars will be hitting at the uh, at the speedway. I know. I know. Months. That's it's it's unbelievable. Because you know, I, I've said this before. There are so many manufacturers that claim their cars are the speed limit is. Uh, the maximum speed is 212, 205, to whatever. But in the real world, it's 188, 180. They don't quite hit two. And we had a totally stock ZR1 with the road tires and pump gas, nothing trick, nothing, no chip in it. And boom, we ran 204 for well, almost 40, 50 miles. So it was yeah. pretty amazing. So tell us how this is different from my, uh, from my ZR1. Well, so this rounds out the Corvette lineup. This is the ZR1 that, that sits on top of the Z06. Right. 650 horsepower, 600 pound-feet of torque. Right. 650 pound-feet of torque. What's different about this car is the LT5 engine up under the hood. Okay. It is about 50% larger than the engine in the Z06. And it's in due in large part to the blower. Okay. That blower puts out about 200 or 2.65 liters of air okay. forced into the motor. When you say it's... 50% bigger. The engine is not physically 50% bigger. The, no, the entire package up under the hood. Okay. The space that the engine and the blower it. would take up. Okay. Is so it's really a bigger larger. blower is what it is. So exactly. You, so you get more. Okay. Yeah, Thank it's you. still the 6.2 liter V8. Right. But the, the packaging with uh, all the coolers and, and everything that it takes to keep this thing running and cool takes up about 50% more space. Tell us about the brakes. So the brakes, these are unique for this car. We took it directly from the, the racing car. Um, they're 15 inch Brembo brakes, carbon ceramic all around, four, six pistons up front, four pistons in the rear, and the combination is unique to ZR1, whereas in the Z06 you had options right. for brakes, but this comes with this car. These brake, this brake configuration comes with this car. And It'll, it's, it's safe to say this is the same Brembo brake and, and was it carbon ceramic? Carbon ceramics. Carbon ceramic disc that you would get on any of the European exotic. Correct. Yeah, yes. it's the same thing, so, yeah. except because it's Corvette and Chevrolet, they can mass produce it and, and, and give it to you for a more reasonable right. price. Yeah. And the stopping yeah. distance is then therefore remarkable. Yeah. And you don't have brake fade like you do on, on other cars, right. which is what keeps this car separate from a lot of the competition is you can run it on the track all day long, it stays cool, and the brakes will always stop you. It's amazing how good it's gotten. I, I, I'm just stunned by it, you know, because you, <laughs> you can scare yourself to death in this thing. Yeah. It pulls so hard. I mean, it's just unbelievable, and it, and it gets pretty good gas mileage too, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you dial it back and just you know humming down the road, the the blower disengages, right? And then you you can get 25 miles per gallon yeah. on the highway. I, that's 
unbelievable to me. It's also a T-top. They're all T-tops, right? It's a target top. A target top. Yeah. T-top would be in sections. Yeah. Tar and this stows in the back. Yeah. I mean, it's. But there is also a convertible variant for this. Too. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is pretty remarkable. You remember a couple years back, we didn't even do a, D a Z06. Right. With a convertible, and we do for this. You know, this seems like the smartest option to me because y y you've got the security. And it's for all intents and purposes, it's a convertible. You know, and it so. looks better too when it's put together like this. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, like a race car, you've got vents everywhere to get the heat out. In the old days, these would have been sort of fake, you know, just to give it a, but these are actually functional. And this front end is new, isn't it? Yeah, everything from the bottom of the windshield forward is pretty much new. And like you said, everything that you see is functional. This car is equipped with the Z2K performance package, track right. performance package. And the front end here, brings in about 40 more percent airflow through the front end to right. cool the blower and the motor than the Z06 does. You know, I've got a few exotic cars and something that always makes me laugh. Like on my McLaren, you have this little splitter in front. So, you know, just, just this plastic piece here. Now, if you break that plastic piece, piece on the McLaren, you can get a new plastic piece or a Z06. <laughs> They're the same price. Yes. I mean, that's, <laughs> that really makes me laugh. It's like, oh, okay, should I? Get another piece of plastic, or maybe why not just get a zero? Yeah, that, that, that's why these to me are just. I don't know how they do it for that price, and I, I don't comment and say that's a lot. Of, I know it's a lot of money, but if you were to piece this car out, it would cost you hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can remember when these brakes were twenty thousand dollars a set. You yeah. know, if you got them optional on some European exotics, that's what's amazing to me about it, the fact that they're able to do it that efficiently at this price point. Can you see what it looks like under the hood? Absolutely. I'll, you, you open it up, I'll go around this side. There's more carbon fiber on this car than any GM vehicle we've ever done. Yeah, I, I believe you there. Um, of course, you've got your dry sump oiling system here. Well, not a lot to see here. Pretty, everything, you got a lot. Got a lot of stuff in here. It's packed in here, and yeah. what, what you're looking at here is the cover for the blower. Right. And that's really what uh, our engineers, how they took this car to the next level, was packaging all of this in here. You'll certainly see that when you're sitting in the driver's seat. Right. But you look at the hood here, and it just sort of surrounds the top of the engine cover, which yeah. is pretty cool. And of course, this is all real carbon fiber. You know, for years, a lot of people did carbon fiber look. Yeah. Like kosher style food. No, this no, isn't a sticker. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. That's it's real carbon fiber, and obviously. My God, that's pretty light. Very light. Yeah. 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 This, the front fenders, the roof panel, the rear deck, the rear quarter panels, all carbon fiber. And of course, all the aero treatments as well. Yeah. I mean, the aero in the front, and look how much air this thing is gulping. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. It just sucks it in. Yeah. yeah. I, this takes in about 40% more air than the Z06 does. Wow. With 13 exchangers on here, heat exchangers. Yeah. You know, every year I keep thinking, well, this is as high as they can go. And this is, uh, this is pretty amazing. I mean, 755 horsepower, uh, that's inconsistent. That was, you know, race cars just a few years ago. Yeah, that speed and the ability to stick to the track and stop yeah. without any failure. And you've got a roof that comes off, too. It does, yeah. Can, can we take that off just to see what it looks like? I'm For curious. sure. I, like, I want to see how it's, how it, uh, right on. So it's carbon fiber. Okay. So it weighs nothing. Doesn't weigh anything. Yeah. Where does it go? It goes in the trunk. Okay. Let's open the back. I like the fact that one person can take the top off. And it fits right in there. That's it. So simple a child can assemble. You know, this is what makes this car great. You now have a well, it's a convertible as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know why you'd buy a convertible because this you get the security and you can actually, you know, that's what I love about Corvette. You can actually put a suitcase back there. Yeah. And you can actually go to Home Depot and pick up stuff. I mean, there's that much room back there, which makes it pretty neat. That's just an excuse for guys with the wife. So what, where are we going to put, honey, you can put a bunch of two by fours back here. Yeah. So I just throw that in to help the guys a little bit. But, and again, of course, it's got the manual box. You know, they're the only company that really commits to this. 
I it's it's just fun to drive, and there's you know the, the especially the Corvette owners, the diehard yeah, fans. Yeah. They want to feel the car. The automatic yeah. is faster across the board right. every situation. And how many speed is the automatic? Eight speed. It is eight. Okay. Yeah. And the manual is seven. Okay. But but this is yeah. I don't know. I I just like the stick, and it's the greatest anti-theft deterrent in history because most sure. thieves can't drive a stick car. But very cool. Let's see what's different at the back. I love the exhaust system. It looks like something from a show car. You know, they used to have multiple pipes and stuff. I mean, I, that looks really great. Well, you uh, know, at high speed, Jay, when you're just humping down the road, there's a blue flame that shoots out of that yeah. nonstop at about 800 degrees. Really? It's something to see. It looks like a rocket. Wow. <laughs> All right. And it's not just when you shift or when it's It's hard to on. see that while you're dry. You can't <laughs> really get your head back there. Yeah, I'm not that, my dexterity is not that good. but. And of course, gone are the classic old style round tail lights. You know, everybody complained about that. Yep. But it's, it's a new vehicle. It's a modern vehicle. It's a different vehicle. That's right. Yeah. And, it, and the swing is incredible here. I... Yeah, this is again, it's part of the ZTK track performance package. Um, it's carbon fiber. These stanchions are mounted all the way down to the chassis. Oh, okay. Because we rely on it to stick the car to the ground. Sure. That sure. 950 pounds. Right. A lot of that happens through here. And then, of course, we have the splitter up in the front the underwing balances it out so the entire car is stuck to the ground. So if this was just bolted to here, it would, could probably crack under pressure. Yeah, it? that's you know an yeah, aftermarket right. part for looks. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. No, very nice. The hatch still opens without it. It's a little bit more cumbersome if you're throwing your golf clubs, but you get to go 210 miles an hour, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I won't be throwing any golf clubs. Don't worry about that. And of course, you got all these vents out here to get air as it goes through the car. Yeah, all functional. There's the scoop right there that brings in yeah. the air brings it down, funnels it through the brakes and some uh, heat exchangers, and right out the back. Yeah. I mean, I, I keep stressing this performance bargain thing, but, you know, I look at cars that have all these features, and they're minimum 375, 390, 400, some close to a million dollars, and they have the same horsepower, you know, and yeah. maybe you get a little fancier interior or something, but, you know, the stuff, thing I like about American performance cars, be it Mustang or even Ford GT, the information systems, because since they make a gazillion of these and they go in everything from Blazers to, you know, Explorers to Lincolns to whatever it might be, they work perfectly. Correct. You know, whenever I get a European exotic, that stuff never quite syncs up right, or it takes too long, or it's last generation. Yeah. You know, the cool thing about the American stuff is we make so many vehicles uh, so quickly that all the stuff is up to date. And, right. And that, that, that's what I love about it. You get in this and boom, all your phone, everything is synced immediately, you know. And then in the other extreme, all of the learnings from the racing program are also brought into this car. Right, right. It's basically a race car that you could buy out of a Chevy showroom. And this has the valet mode, right, too? It does have the valet mode. The valet yeah. mode is the greatest thing in the world. What that does is when you give your car to a valet, you press valet mode, that records everything the valet does in the car. So when you get your car back and it smells like weed, and you go, hey, was somebody smoking Toby? No, and they cut the, <laughs> some guy sitting there. There's a video of the guy behind the wheel of your car smoking dope, changing the radio stations, whatever he's doing, burning rubber. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's the greatest feature. Illegal and in some states. It is illegal in some states, <laughs> but most valets don't know about it. So when you see them, well, go on YouTube, you'll see a bunch of just idiots doing stuff to people's cars. So that, I, I love that feature, it just makes me laugh. What else we have here? It uh, also comes equipped with the performance data recorder. Right. Which is the front end, front looking camera that sort of overlays your performance, how you're driving the car, sure. uh, based on the track that you're at. And then if you're one of those drivers, you can fine tune your skills. The car will actually tell you, let, you could have taken this turn faster, apply the brakes yeah. over here. So uh, we have a couple of partners that overlay some of those algorithms for us. The thing I like about vehicles like this you never quite master them, so they always keep you interesting. Always the level of ahead. performance is so high that you just can't, you know, like I like motorcycles when I ride them. New bikes are so unbelievable that I, I think I'm doing good, and then guys are going by me at twice the speed, and I go, oh, I'm, I think I'm getting old. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, this is so much better than you are that it'll always keep you on your toes, you know. There's always something to excite you or, 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 or make you realize you can go further than you th thought you could. And of course, the tires are Michelin, right? They are, yep. Again, brakes, tires, are the same thing you'd get on some European exotic at three times the price. There's no difference. And I love the fact that Chevy is not so vain that they, you know something, somebody makes a better brake than we do? 
let's go with Brembo. Oh, know? heck yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that's great. I think that's great. Uh, so you, you really have a lot of European influence in this car, even though it's American as well. And it's truly a world car, because you can sell this in every market, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I think it's time we went for a ride. I already drove one at 200, but I haven't driven one at 60 or 70. I want to see what that's like. Let's give it a shot. like the dream job being the product development guy at uh, Corvette? Yeah, I mean, this is not a bad day at the office, that's no, for sure. No. Especially when they come out with stuff like this. Yeah. We all thought the Z06 was about as badass as you could get. Yeah. So how does it work? Do you find out stuff before it happens or do you find out after it happens? You know, uh, do they let you know what's coming up? I only get to know what's coming if I'm involved with the planning of the reveal. Yeah. Otherwise, they keep pretty tight-lipped because... Yeah. People like to talk. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. But that's not a bad thing, leaking little things out here. I mean, to me, the most amazing well-kept secret was the new Ford GT. Nobody had any idea that was coming, and then it just showed up at the, at the auto shop. Yeah. And it knocked the MSX, which is brand new, right out of the game. I mean, it was like, what? What's that? How about the, uh, uh, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they pulled it off. So even though you are in tour mode, yeah. if you stay on the throttle, the exhaust will open up for you. Right. So it's nice. You can drive around in quiet mode, then you have sport and track. But you really can't use track on the street at all. It takes it too low, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it does. It's too loud and it's, it's very jarring. And Does it lower or does it just tighten up? It just tightens up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's funny. When I first got in this, I thought my visibility would be hampered first in the rear by the wing. But the wing is actually higher than the rear view mirror. So I can see right through it. And I thought this scoop would really be intrusive in the front, but it drops off so quickly that it's really, it's really not a problem at all. And when you're in quiet mode, it's amazing how quiet it is. Yeah. I mean, the rush of torque is just amazing. You know, you can't beat American V8s with that bottom end, you know? Yeah. And Americans don't really get top end. You know, when Honda came out with that little 2000 and, uh, what, about 15 years ago, it revved to nine grand, but you really had to keep it, the revs up to get any power out of it. And people were always short shifting because they thought they were gonna hurt the engine, you know? Well, Americans like these low revving, just boom, just muscle of torque from zero. And you could feel it. That pushrod V8. Yeah. Tried and true. Oh, yeah, it does open up much of Yeah. <laughs> And then it just goes away. Well, you know, people who don't know Corvettes always make fun of the pushrod V8 like it's old fashioned. But when your pushrods are low, it means your cam is low. So all your moving parts are down low in the chassis. You know, a lot of times you'll drive a, uh, a car with height with the cams way up here and you can feel the front end. It's a little top heavy. Yeah. I mean, Tesla works because all the power is below the axle. All the weight is below the axle. So it handles pretty well. And this keeps it low also. It's hilarious. What am I? I'm in fourth gear. Yeah. I felt like second. When we're sitting at idle, the blower takes about one, one horsepower to operate. Oh, really? Is that right? Yeah. And then when you're full throttle, it takes 110 horsepower wow. to blow that air into the motor. Wow. the automatic is faster but I like a stick it's much more fun it really is the only awful thing is it tells you the actual speed limit on the road so you have no excuse can you get rid of that can you dial that out I don't think you can I think that's our lawyers involvement in this yeah, car. yeah it's a, I mean there's almost a video game feel of looking through this windshield because everything happens so succinctly you know, I've come to believe that I think maybe the greatest thing that came out of Detroit was that bankruptcy a couple of years ago. Because now the company is lean. It's all run by engineers. Uh, Mark Royce, the guy, he's an engineer. He's a car guy. Yeah. I can remember years ago in the early 90s meeting all these Detroit executives. 
and they came from, I don't know, Calvinator or other companies. You know, they didn't come from automobile companies. They were marketing guys, and they weren't engineers, you know. They weren't really interested in whether carbon fiber brakes are better than steel brakes, because who goes that fast on the street anyway, you know? I remember uh, reading years, you know, from the 50s, some General Motors engineer, somebody mentioned disc brakes, he goes, what do we land in airplanes? You don't need disc brakes, <laughs> yeah. you know, because that's good enough was the mantra for so long among Detroit, you know, not General Motors, I mean, among just among the industry. And now everybody's running it, you know, A level. Yeah. And Mary, too, our CEO, Mary Barra. Yeah, Mary Barra. Yeah, she's a real car person. Engineer. Yeah, they're all engineers. That's Owns a Z06. Oh, she's a Z06? Yeah. That's great. You know, I kind of say the car business is like the restaurant business. You know, in restaurant, every restaurant is rated. If there's not an A in the window, people don't eat there. You just don't go. You don't go, oh, look, a C minus. Let's eat here, you know? Yeah. And, and it's the same thing with the car business. Unless, unless you're building the very best car you can, boom. You're out of the game. I mean, to see Detroit competing with the rest of the world to me is just fantastic. You know, even a competitor like Mustang, it's a world-class sports car now. That twin cam engine, fantastic. This, the new mid-engine uh, Chevrolet that nobody knows anything about that's coming out hopefully in a couple of years. It's all really exciting. And Cadillac, I mean, a Cadillac with a stick shift, that was unheard of when I was Yeah. Young, you know, and I've got one. I've got one of the last of the six-speed Cadillac, and I love that thing. It's just a four-wheel version of this. CTSV? Yeah, it's a yeah. fantastic car. Yeah, it's a fun time to be in the car biz. It is. Builders are more informed, and the consumer is more informed. You can't fool people with stickers and, no. you, know, you know, GT badges anymore. You know, now the car's really got to perform. It's got to do what it says they do. You know, the thing about this car is there is no sane way you can find the legal limits of it on the street. It's just not possible. You know, I'm not sure what advantage a European exotic would have over this. It's not lighter for the most part. It does, certainly doesn't have more horsepower. Certainly doesn't have more torque. And most of them don't have a, a manual transmission anymore. So yeah, this is just something you can live with. You get reasonable ground clearance. I mean, this is probably a little bit lower than a Z06, isn't it? Yes. But if you want the ultimate Corvette, this is pretty much it. I mean, fourth gear feels like second gear. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's got so much. All right, this second gear. It's so much. How much torque is it? What is the torque rating on this? 715. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Those are like diesel numbers. Yeah, like a tractor. Yeah, it's amazing. It all goes back to Ed Cole. He's the father of the small block Chevy. Ed Cole, wow. You know the name? Yeah. President of General Motors, developed the Corvair. Cover of Time magazine a couple of times. Well, every year Corvette just astounds me more and more. <laughs> I thought my ZR1 was fast. This is really unbelievable. Chad, thank you very much. My pleasure. And thank Todd at uh, Spring Mountain. Again, when you go to Vegas, during the daytime, to stay out of trouble, get away from those girls, get away from the gambling table, take an Uber ride or a cab ride, go out to Spring Mountain, check out the track, and uh, you'll have the time of your life. That's for sure. And it'll be less of a gamble, believe me. <laughs> you know, we didn't even do this car justice today. In fact, let's show that speedometer hitting 202 miles an hour again. Put that back up. See you guys next week. Thanks for checking it out. Sixty-six, eighty-five. 85. I get a little heat in the tires. 116, 124, 135.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 